All right, welcome to the ultimate beginner guide of how to start your FPV journey. And today we will be looking at the types and options of your radio control system. So the last time we talked about the video system, this time we are going to talk about the radio system. So basically, to make it simpler, we're just going to talk about which radio and signal type do you want to use to control your drone with. So this is another challenging topic as there is not a universal radio protocol that will bind with any radios with any receivers. This is just not happening at the moment. You will need to pick and choose a protocol to start with and hopefully stick with it to avoid having multiple radios. All right, so we are going to be looking at the major types of radio control links, which they are FRSky, Crossfire, DJI, and ExpressLRS. Each of them are their own radio protocols and they do not bind with each other. For example, an EOLR's receiver will not work with a radio that only supports TBS Crossfire, and each of them has their own strength and weaknesses. Let's look at them one by one, and hopefully by the end of this video, you will know which one you wanted to use to start your FPV journey with. Let's get going. So the first one we will be looking at is going to be the protocol called FR Sky. So FR Sky is very affordable and widely available on a lot of pre-built drones, planes, RC cards, and both as they have been out there for so long. So the benefit of this protocol is it is wide range of availability. The downside, however, is the penetration and range is not very good if you are trying to fly a drone because like when you wanted to fly a drone, it kind of travels a little bit farther than the RC car or a boat or something. If you flew behind a big object in the distance, your radio signal can easily be blocked and you may lose control of your drone and that's the worst things to happen. FR Sky used to be the number one RC go-to protocol as they have a nice radios and good receivers and they are just widely available before. However, the development of this company seems to have gone in the wrong direction during the recent years. For example, older FR Sky radios may not talk to newer receivers and newer radios does not talk to the older receivers. If FR Sky did not bother to fix it, this makes Finding a first guy a headache for a lot of pilots and drove many pilots to switch to TBS Crossfire or other protocols because they are just kind of like that's a way of forcing people to upgrade and people are not buying them. But good news is to fix this issue, some third party, not FR Sky, third party, like the Radio Master, came out with their four in one multi protocol module that includes all the versions of FR Sky and many other less popular protocols like the Spectrum or Futaba. This makes the FR Sky protocol accessible again, as you can now use the one controller to buy with all of them. Buy with FR Sky, buy with Futaba, buy with Spectrums, and a lot more. So for the full list, you can look just look at the page that I'm be showing you right now. Yeah, so this is the full list. So if you're looking to get into the FR Sky protocol, you might as well just get the 4-in-1 instead to free up your options. So besides the 4-in-1, there is another group of protocols that I want you to pay attention on, which is called the CC2500, which you can often see as in protocol when you are buying your radios. So it's going to have a CC250 that is there right there saying that hey it's available this is also an indication that it will support fr sky protocol and in fact the cc 2050 2500 was also one of the protocols in the four in one module four in one multi protocol so if you buy the four in one multi protocol this is going to be included in there and that's why the four in one has fr sky is because it has cc 2500 the next protocol we will be looking at is called the tbs crossfire so crossfire is owned and developed by the team black sheep tbs so team black sheep tbs this protocol has its strength over long range and strong penetration over obstacles and it has soon become favorable by many fpv pilots so Kind of the era is FR Sky and went to Crossfire. However, there is a small problem with this. As it is strictly owned and developed by TBS, they have to make money to survive. So it makes complete sense. Every module radio receiver that runs Crossfire has to be manufactured by TBS. You will not be able to find a radio that has a built-in Crossfire for a third-party manufacturer. You will have to buy from TBS or their distributor directly. And if they have a problem producing anything, then probably you will have trouble finding the products. This is why TBX products are easier to get out of stock and a bit pricier. So besides of this small issue, 
it is still a very good and reliable system and many many manufacturers already integrated the receiver into their drones so it can be simply a bite and fly and if you wanted to use long range i would still say the tbs crossfire is probably one of the more reliable one because when they're developing it in the company standpoint like company is selling this product they are putting a little bit more mites into it so obviously i would say they're trying to do their best to produce better products the next protocol we're going to talk about is going to be the most famous express ls Express LS is the radio protocol I personally use. It offers strong penetration and long range just like the Crossfire, but way, way, way cheaper. This is thanks to its open source nature, like AKA, it is not owned by any company and the contribution uh, engineer basically working for free to produce this radio. So the companies out there can just simply get the software to integrate it into their hardware to save on development costs. Because of this, ExpressLR's hardware is widely available and rarely out of stock, and they are less pricier. And I will say it's probably the most popular protocol that people may choose to use as of today. So however, the downside of ExpressLS is the initial learning curve to know how to get your drone to bind, but I don't think it is that hard anymore. All you have to do right now as of today is to make sure your receiver in your radio has the same Express LRS version. Let your drone enter a binding mode and hit the bind button on your radio and they should bind directly. Or you can use the binding phrase which is to me much easier. So if you wanted to know how to set up your bind phrase to your radio and your drones, I have listed some videos at the description for your reference. Next, we're going to be talking about the DJI protocol. So if you're coming from a DJI ecosystem, meaning you had a DJI FPV combo or a Avata kit with the controller 2, then this protocol might be best for you if you wanted to keep using your controller 2 or maybe even now the controller 3. So DJI protocol, of course, will only work with DJI radios. DJI have built their receiver protocol within their VDS kit or the air unit. So it's basically in the video system. So you can see this from the image from Flywoo to show you what connects with what. However, do be aware if you wanted to use the DJI protocol, you will have to buy their compatible air units as they do not have the option for you to buy a receiver only. By seeing this, you can also understand it as as long the video system on your website listing of the drone you are trying to buy is DJI, then there is going to be a receiver built into the video system for you to use with your DJI radio. But one tricky part of the DJI protocol is the radio has generation compatibility issue. For example, the DJI Radio 1 is not going to work with the newer O3 system. This is the way DJI quote unquote encourages people to upgrade. So do pay attention of this. So if you wanted to use your DJI radios. However, having a DJI protocol built in does not mean that you need to use it. You have the option to solder on other receiver protocols onto the flight controller to convert it to Express LS, Crossfire, FR Sky. So you will not be tied to DJI only. This is just something extra that if you wanted to do, you can. Okay, so back to the bench. And these are basically just a summary of all the protocols that is on the market at the moment. So the question remains, which one should you get to start? So my recommendation is if you are just entering the hobby and have completely limited budget, most of us are, I will strongly suggest you to pick a radio that has ExpressLS built in. So basically you will get a lot of ExpressLS radios that is already built into the radio so you don't have to get additional one. Yeah, so ExpressLS is slowly taking over the hobby. Maybe radio on the market already has a built-in ExpressLS protocol and many pre-built drones are integrated with ExpressLS receiver. Additionally, if you have a little bit more money to spend, I will also suggest getting a four-in-one radio like the Pocket, you do have a CC250. It's not a four-in-one, but mostly what you're gonna use is FR Sky. This is just my route. You don't have to listen to me. I will suggest to get a 4-in-1 radio or a CC250 that has the ability to add a external module like the Radio Master Pocket, TX12, Boxer, or even TX16 or the Radio Master Zoro or the Jumper T20. I think they do have the option for you to add an external module as well. So with these radios, this will allow you to have the option to add a external EOLARS module on the back to be compatible with the both FR Sky and Express LS. So you will basically be able 
able to use your radios for 90% of the buying and fly drones that is on the market. Okay, so I hope my explanation is easy enough to understand. If you have additional questions, please feel free to leave a comment or message down below. I will do my best to answer the questions you have. All right, and I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.